Well, good evening, everybody. This is Natalie Owens. Hey, Jen, come on in. Thank you for being here tonight. Rochelle, can you bring me my other light, please? Mm -hmm. Hi, Roz. Hello, Bridget. I see you guys. Come on in. Good evening, everybody. I'm Natalie Owens, and I'm glad to be here with you guys tonight. Thank you guys for being here with me, I should say. Uh, let me get my stuff together real quick. I forgot all about this. My lighting is uneven. All righty, there we go. So I thank you guys for joining me. Hey, Kiki, I see you. Thank you guys for being here tonight. And I want to tell you tonight, I'm not here to help everybody. I know that I'm not here to help everybody, not trying to save the world, but I am here to help somebody. And if that somebody is you, I'm glad that you are joining me tonight. So let's get started. Tonight, I want to talk about, and from here on out, I think I'm going to talk about leadership in our life, leadership in my life. What does leadership in my life look like? What does leadership in my life personally look like? Um, and so oftentimes when we think about um, leadership, we always think sometimes it's not me. First, we think it's not me. And then we, um, you know, we don't think it's ourselves. And then we think we're not capable of leadership. But I don't want to talk about you leading anyone else. I want to talk about leadership in your own personal life. What does that look like for you? Um, so oftentimes I don't have to put in the work if I'm not the leader. Um, I don't have to put in the work if I'm not the leader. And so we tend to kind of sit back. If you're not the person in charge, you're not the person responsible for the whole thing. You can kind of sit back. You can kind of come late, leave early, uh, do whatever it is that you want to do. But tonight I want to talk to you about being the leader in your own life. If you don't show up because you're not the leader at work, you're not the leader in your community, you're not the leader of your family, so you can kind of fall back sometimes, but you've gotten to a place where, you know what, I'm comfortable. I'm not the leader in any capacity. I'm just, you know, I go to work, do my job, do this. I'm the assistant. I'm the, you know, to the vice president of the PTA, whatever it might be but you've gotten comfortable in sitting back in your own life. So for the next few weeks, I wanna talk about um, being the leader in your own life, taking responsibility, taking charge of your own life, stepping up, doing what you need to do, handling your business, but working on my character, working on my integrity, um, building who I am. We're gonna talk about the um, uh, how I'm influenced, influenced and how do I grow? What's, what's important to me um, in my life to make me better. So let's look at the leader in you to stand up and be the leader in your life. Hi, Yolanda, I see you. Um, what does that look like? So in talking about leadership, leadership is a thing of character. Leadership is a thing of integrity. Um, it's a thing of reputation, how you live. Leadership, I often say in leadership class, leadership is not what you do. And we tend to think that. We tend to think leadership is what we do. Uh, leadership is not what you do. Leadership is who you are. The best leaders focus on being better themselves because if, if I'm a leader, the better that I am, the better I can be for the people that I lead, but the greater the people that I, that I other, the greater the leaders that I raise up. So when we look at leadership, we think we're thinking it's the position, it's what I do, it's what I, what people do, it's what they qualify for. And that's not what leadership is. Leadership is being overdoing all the time. And I often teach you have two types of leaders. You have positional leaders who are in it for the attention, um, the character, I mean, the, the, the attention, the, the title, the money, or whatever it might be. But then you have leaders who are purpose leaders. And so what I want you to think about is being purposeful in being leading in your own life. Get in the habit of being intentional about growing. Get in the habit of being intentional about being your, your best self. Get in the habit of focusing on um, not looking at everybody else, not being, not thinking about what everybody else is, what everybody else is doing, what everybody else is focusing on. When you sit and you think about who you should be and how much better you can be, 
Listen, you don't have time to think about other people. You don't have time to focus on other people. You become solution oriented and all you think about is making things better, making life better, making people better. Um, how do I grow to get better to make the people that I lead better? Because um, we want to sometimes by default as parents, as husbands and wives, even as employees, we just want to do enough. We have a mindset that uh, it's, it's okay, just that's good, that's good. Some people have say sometimes it don't even, it don't take all that. Why we have to? Why do we have to go to that extreme? Because enough is not enough. Because enough is not good enough. And you got to get a mindset that you know what? Every day I want to walk in this power. Every day I want to walk in this power that God gave me personally. Every day I want to I want to live my life in excellence to the glory of God. Every day I want to do what he would have me to do. Every day I want to be my best self so that when I sit before other people, when I need to help other people or even imparting into my family, my children, my husband, I need to be my best self. And we tend to take the people closest to us for granted. We tend to take, we tend to take um, our children for granted, our siblings for granted, our mates for granted, you know, the co-workers that you're with every day. I don't think I need to be better for anybody. I don't think I need to be better for them. And so we get this kind of relaxed mode that I'm, in, I'm not in charge. Um, I'm not responsible for the whole thing, so I don't need to worry about it. And that's not the truth. You do need to worry about it because you need to be your best self. You always need to be your best self. So rather than having that relaxed mindset, sitting back and saying, you know, this is what my life is. This is what my life is going to be. I don't need to work harder. I don't need to try, try harder. I don't need to be better. Every day we need to be better. Every day we need to be better. And I talk to you a lot about um, not allowing your circumstances and your situations to dictate your character. One part of leading in your life, a major part, I should say, of leading in your life is how you build your character. And my character is not built on me being the victim of something, me being a victim of a circumstance or a situation. My character is not built on what happens to me. My character is not what, what I go through. My character is not is not what happens to me. My character is what I make it. And every day you have to get up with an intentional mindset to be better today than you were yesterday. Not in competition with anybody, not trying to be better than anybody, not trying to outdo anybody. But God, how do I become my best self? How do I get up every day and be my best self? How do I build my character every single day. Sunday night, I shared a message about uh, King Solomon and um, uh, unpack your stuff. And, and all of my stuff sometimes gets in the way. But even with all the stuff that I have, that I've packed and that I carry around um, every day my, of my own, there are some things that God gave you that you should be unpacking. There are some character builders, some things that he gave you that we haven't even tapped into yet. Some things that would build your character. Some of us want to do more. Some of us want to give more. Some of us want to just sit back and be relaxed. But God says you have to learn to tap into those things about you that you don't know. I want you to learn to tap into the things about you that you can't see. Tap into the things about you that you don't think you that you can do. Some of us are sitting back and we're saying, you know what, I can't do that. That's not me. That's just not my character. That's not who I am. But sit sometimes and think about this. I told you about writing down last week the things that you should trade off. Think about those things that you can get rid of that have caused you to sacrifice some great things in your life. You traded off the wrong stuff. You know, you traded off some good stuff for the wrong stuff. And here I am in a mess. But there are some things that God put in us that we, we need to unpack in order for us to walk in what he says we can walk in. There are some things in you that you haven't even, you haven't even realized yet. For all the times that you tell yourself that you can't, for all the times that you tell yourself, you know what, that you're not qualified, for all the times that you tell yourself what you're not, for all the times that you tell yourself, you know, what you, what you shouldn't do, why you shouldn't do it, for all the times that you talk yourself out of stuff, 
How many times have you talked yourself out of going back to school? Talk yourself out of the promotion. Talk yourself out of the blessing. Talk yourself out of starting the business. Talk to yourself out of buying a home. Talk to yourself out of going to your next level. Talk to yourself out of starting to exercise and getting your health, health right. Talk to yourself out of saving your money and going on and spending the money that you don't have for something that you don't need. How many times have you talked yourself out of, come on here, the good stuff. He says, I'm trying to build character in you. I'm trying to build uh, uh, um, integrity in you. I'm trying to build stamina in you. I'm trying to build commitment in you. I'm trying to build consistency in you. I'm trying to take you to a place kind of like, you know, the, the outer limits. I'm trying to take you to a place that you've never gone before. And he says, and you won't give me the opportunity to do it because you keep grabbing the old stuff. You keep going back to what you're, you're comfortable, with, comfortable with. He says, I'm trying to make you the leader in your life. I'm trying to bring you to the forefront of your life. Some of us have so many other people in the forefront of our lives that we can't even see ourselves. Some of us have so many people in front of us in our lives. We have so many people in our lives that we are responsible, responsible for, or that we've told ourselves in our minds, even in our hearts, oh, I got to do this for them, and I have to do this for them, and I have to do this for them, and I have to do this for them, that you take taking the back seat in your own life. But what are you actually doing for you? And I'm a stickler about this because when you take care of you the way that you should take care of you, you will, you will kill it taking care of everybody else. If you think you are as good as you are right now, doing what you do for everybody else, can you imagine if you step back for a minute and allow God to build your character so that you could fully be everything that he says you are? If you step back for a minute and you went to God like Solomon went to God, and Solomon said, after God said he was king, God, I'm young. I don't know how to do this. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to lead people. I've never been a king before. I'm a young man and I need you to give me wisdom and I need you to give me direction. And the, and the scripture says, and God was pleased with Solomon's request to the point where God gave him wisdom and made him the wisest man that had ever lived, but he also gave him the other things, riches, he made him the richest man that had ever lived. And some of us are doing it the other way. We're saying, God, give me all the stuff. Give me all the riches. Give me all the other things. And, and hopefully my character will, it'll someday, it'll kind of show up. And God says, no. And that's why we haven't received the tangible stuff. He says, because I'm trying to give you stuff. I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring you to the forefront of your own life. Some of us are even so busy saying, I'm doing the Lord's work. And I think I said this last week. We have emotion, spiritual trade-offs. Well, I'm doing the Lord's work. You're not doing the Lord's work to your demise. Listen to me. You're not doing the Lord's work and it's depleting you. You're not doing the Lord's work and you're not advancing in growth. You're not advancing in character. You're not advancing in purpose. You're not advancing in commitment. You're not advancing in discipline. Here you are saving the world and your life is a mess. Your house is a mess. Your finances are a mess. Your relationships are a mess. You can't be doing God's work and everything about the work that you represent is not represented in your life. And those are spiritual trade-offs. Come on here. He says, I'm trying to build character in you. I'm trying to get you to a place. I'm trying to bring you to the forefront of your own life to be the leader in your own life. Stop stepping back, taking the back seat. Stop saying, well, I'm gonna just, I'll get to it when I can. Don't wait till you get sick to start taking care of yourself. Take care of yourself while you're healthy. Don't, don't, don't just overlook your finances until you are completely broke and now you need God to just send you a blessing. No, take care of your money. Make sure your business is in order. Get your life in order. He says, and the way that you start to lead in your life is that you build good character. What is my character? 
What does my character look like? He says, so to build your character, you have to focus on being better on the inside first. So the way that we normally build character is that we go and we do the outside first. Some of us change up the outside Every other week, we're changing the outside because somebody said, if you keep changing the outside, it'll make you feel better. And the reason that you keep changing the outside so much is because you don't like the way you feel on the inside. See, when you, when you do the work from the inside out, you find contentment. And contentment says, I'm going to rest right here in this place, but as I rest, I'm going to advance forward in my character. I'm still going to build me and work on me. But as often, if, you, if you're so busy changing the outside, you don't have time to, to do anything on the inside. The way that you build your character work first, John Maxwell says in the 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth, focus on being better on the inside first. Now it's easier, listen, it's easier to fix the outside first. It's easier to, to buy, you know, to do something on the outside first. It's easier to focus on the outside and then to pretend like, you remember when we used to play pretend? When you play pretend, you could be anything that you wanted to be. It's easier to focus on the outside and fix it the way we want to fix it to cause people to believe what we want them to believe. But if I really want to build my character, I'm going to start working on me from the inside to change the outside. And when you get so caught up in working on the inside, you lose what you're trying to, to what you're trying to trying to uh, cause other people to see about you. You lose that desire of what people think. When you get so busy with working on the inside of you, come on here, focusing on the inside of you for you to be better, you start to lose. It's so much work that I need to do inside of me, that I start to lose focus on what people think about me because I don't have time. You start to lose focus of what people are saying about you because I don't have time, because there's so much work that needs to be done in me that I don't have time to look at you. And God just allowed a situation to happen, my, happen in my life. And he said, because you got caught slipping. You got caught slipping and you stepped away. You stepped away from the from, from what what it what should be for you and you drifted. And I said, God, I learned the lesson. And I won't ever repeat that lesson. God, I learned the lesson. He said, You got to focus on you f- to be better. Focus on you from the inside out, not the outside. Don't start with the outside. Because the outside can be changed with money. The inside is only changed with patience and time and love for yourself. Listen to me. The outside, you can go buy a whole outside if you want to. Not an outfit, an outside. You can do whatever you want to do to change the outside. But the inside cannot be bought. Oh, hear me somebody tonight. The inside cannot be bought. The only way that you change the inside is to love yourself, have some patience, come on here, and it's going to take time. And most days, you might find somebody that can help you a little bit, but for the most part, you've got to do the work. I tell my mentorship, I'm here to walk with you, but I'm here to just kind of guide you, but you have to put in the work. Don't dare pay your money and don't put in the work. Because you paying your money is not a reflection of you being in mentorship. You doing the work is a reflection of you being in leadership. Your life changing is a reflection of you being in leadership. I tell them mentorship is two things. Mentorship is integrity on your part and and accountability on mine. You got to show up. You have to show up. I'm going to hold you accountable, but you got to have integrity to do the work. He says, I'm trying to build your character. So what are you asking God for? Stop asking God for stuff and start asking God for your stuff. Stop asking him to give you tangible things and start asking him for the intangible things, things that make you. Some of us need to be seen and some of us need to be heard. And some of us need the applause and some of us need the attention. 
And he says, stop looking for that. When you start focusing on being better from the inside out, you won't have time for that. That hunger will leave you. That desire to be with everybody, to please everybody, to be seen with everybody, the photo op with everybody, he said that will leave you. And you'll be so focused on being better, being who God said you should be so that you can affect change in somebody else's life. Many of us are not connected to affect change in the lives of other people because I haven't even, I haven't built my character for me. And so when you haven't worked on you to be better from the inside out, the way that you help people is all tangible. You buy them stuff and you give them stuff and you give them money and you give them clothes and you let them use your car, you give them a ride and you give them. Now that's one way of showing people that you love them, but an even greater way of, of, of me showing you uh, um, who to, to help you is to show you, is, is not to give you something tangible, but to give you something that will change your life. So it's easy to give a man something to eat. It's an even greater blessing to teach him how to feed himself. Come on, somebody. And so we get in the habit of giving and giving and giving and giving so much that we're depleted. And it's because you haven't built character in you to empower you to be able to nourish you first and then nourish them properly. So when I'm not nourished properly, I just give stuff. I give stuff. I give stuff. I give stuff. But give people. And that's why communities don't change because we give stuff all the time. But it doesn't change the community. You got to get in the minds of people. You have to get into the hearts of people. And if more people could get into the hearts of people and into the minds of people, we would see transformation in our cities. But if you keep just giving people a turkey and giving them a jacket, yeah, they do need that. But what they need more than a jacket, what they need more than a turkey is character. Solomon didn't ask for stuff. Solomon said, God, give me wisdom. Give me understanding to lead your people. Because if I get wisdom and I get understanding, he said, from God, and I give it to the people that he told me to lead, and I'm the wisest man that lived, what will the people that I lead be? And he said, and because you ask for wisdom and direction, that was a mature request. I'll give you everything else. So what we do is we want to give the everything else first, or we want to get the everything else first, and then we're going to get, and we never get wisdom, and we never get direction. We never get understanding from God to lead. We just keep giving stuff, and we never give people stuff. And the Bible says, in all you're getting, get an understanding. Get an understanding before you get a jacket, before you get a get an understanding. It's one thing to give man food for his family, but it's another thing to teach him, teach him to be a man. Come on here to lead his family, to guide his family and to teach him to take care of his family. Because every year he and his family will be in line for a turkey. But who's going to teach him to go get a job to be able to buy his own eventually? And then be able for him to be able to impart that to somebody else. God says, I'm trying to build character. Because character changes lives, not, not tangible stuff. He says, I'm trying to build character in you. Something that you've needed all your life. He says, if you get character, you'll, be, you'll get better relationships. If you get character, you'll mind your money better. If you get character, you'll discipline yourself and your health. If you get character, you'll mend your broken families. If you can get character... He said, and the way that you get character is to focus on being better from the inside out. Stop buying stuff to impress people. Come on here. That you don't need to impress people that you don't like or that don't even like you. Social media has boomed. Made us believe everybody that clicked that picture likes us. Come on here. He says, I'm trying to build character. I'm trying to bring you to the, to the, to the front of your life. I'm trying to teach you to lead your life. I'm trying to teach you to be the leader in your life. And the way that it starts is to build character in you. It's to build character in you. I'm just trying to build character in you because what will sustain you 
is your character. And some of us go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth because my character goes back and forth and back and forth. My character moves with the circumstance and the situation. I'm never stable. I'm never solidified. I don't have a stance in my life. I don't have a position that I've taken in my life. I don't live by a standard. I don't have a standard. I don't know my value. I don't know my worth. And as a result, I just go with the way the wind is blowing. I go with what's popular in my life. I told you guys a few weeks ago, I don't go everywhere I'm invited to speak because everywhere is not for me and everywhere is not ready for me. Everywhere, everywhere thinks they want you to come in until you get there and you start talking and then they go, whoa, we shouldn't have. And so everywhere is not for me. And so I'm not the leader for the money. I'm the leader for the people. If you want transformation, I'll come. But if you want somebody on the program, that might not be me. And I'm okay with that because my character says, if this is how you live your life and this is the standard that you live by and this is the value that you live your life with, guess what? That's all that I give people. I don't give you just a speech according to your thing. Most times I don't even talk about their thing. Because mm -mm, the theme is just something for the moment. And sometimes we need something that's going to sustain us. We just had Thanksgiving. So the, the moment is kind of like we have the chili dogs for Thanksgiving. Come on here. But the sustaining factor, but the sustaining factor is what we really had. You know, you had your dressing and your blah, 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 and you had everything. We had, we had it all, but the moment is just putting something on the place and we have a sandwiches for Thanksgiving. And that's kind of how we do. I just want somebody to come in and talk on the program. We don't want anything deep. We don't want anything real serious. We don't want anything. You're not, you're not, you don't want to build character in people. Oh, you just wanted to have an event. You don't want people to get in the habit of focusing on building themselves from the inside out to be better, to really change a community, to change a city, to change a state, to say, change a nation. Oh, you just want to have a program and say it was good and we clap and then we go home. But we're not about, we're not focusing on building character. We're not about teaching people to lead in their lives. We're not about teaching people to manage their money. We're not about teaching people to get their help together. We just want to have a program. And that's what the church, that's what everything just about. And God says, so when do you ask me for the real stuff? When do you ask me for the real stuff? So even in saying, God, heal me, that's not even the real stuff. There's a passage of scripture where Jesus, 10 lepers went to Jesus and they were outside the city and they met Jesus and they said, Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesus healed them. He said, go show yourself to the priest. And the scripture says, and one man came back and to tell Jesus, thank you. He healed them of leprosy so they could go back to their normal lives. Well, the other nine men went back. And this one man came back to Jesus to tell Jesus, thank you. And Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Look at this. Nine of them left healed of leprosy. This man came back and said, thank you. So not only did he get healing, but he was also made whole. It's the difference. So some of you are saying, God healed my body. And it's not that you need your body healed, it's that you need to be whole. It's not that you need your body healed. It's not that you need the infirmity to go away. If you get whole, the infirmity will leave. Listen to me, because some of us have been in, have, have had the infirmity, the sickness for so long that we built our character around what our infirmity is. Some of us are still depressed. Because my infirmity has caused me to be depressed. My situation, we built our whole identity around whatever the infirmity is. Generational curses. This is what my family used to be. So we built our whole, our whole life around, well, you know, I came from a family that, and we don't go to college and we don't do, and in my family, girl, we just, we don't do, you know, we don't do that. And we came because I came from this city and I came from this family and I'm, I'm a black one and I'm a black man and I'm, and I can't because, 
You, 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 you built your whole life around your infirmity. And that man came back to say, thank you for healing me of the disease. And he said, but not only that, you are made whole. And I said, wow, that's a, that's a difference. There's a difference in, in being healed and being whole. We want to be healed, but we don't request to be whole. Because when he makes me whole, everything about me becomes in order. Everything. When I'm made whole, everything about me lines up with the will of God. Everything about me lines up with the will of God. Everything about my life lines up with the will of God. God, I don't want to be healed. I want to be whole. And he says, so wholeness comes from the inside out. Healing comes from a touch on the outside. Come on here. Healing comes from a touch. Wholeness comes from the inside out. God says, I'm going, not only am I going to heal your infirmity, I'm going to give you character that will change your life and not only change your life, but it will cause you to change the life of everybody you meet. Listen to me. Before I give you money, I want to have a conversation with you. I want to talk about your life. I want to talk about you. I want to get you to another level spiritually, mentally, emotionally. I want to, I want to cause you to think when you leave me. I want to leave you in a place of, wow, I need to go, I need to go home and make some changes so that I'm not in this position again. And I'm mindful of that. Anybody that I have a conversation with, I want, I want it, I want, I want you to be, I want you to leave in a in a place of thinking of how to make your life better after we've had an encounter. Why? Because that's how I live my life. With my children, we're gonna have a good conversation every day about something, growth, something. Every day. We were at Home Depot today, and a, and a man, you know, is talking to us. And he says to my son, you need to go to college. And my son, he said, you going to school? My son said, no, I'm working. And he said, you need to go to college. I have two boys and they went to college. You listen to me, you go to college. And then he looks at my daughter and he says, you need to go to college too. I said, she went to college. She went to college for six years for free. She just finished college. Oh, okay, that's good, that's good. He says, well, I don't know if you work. And he's assuming, he sees this black woman with these two black young adults and he starts to assume our life. And he says, well, I don't know if you're working because you need to help your mom with the finances. You know, you're working to help your mom with the finances, but you need to go to school. He never asked where we came from, who we were. He just started assuming. Just started assuming, just never asked. And so we immediately just, yes, sir. And then he, I guess, saw the expression on my face and he stopped. But he immediately wanted to give us the life that he thought we were and never asked. Cause, and I, and I said, I wanted him to keep going. I told my kids, I wanted him to keep going. Cause now I want to have a conversation with you. Cause if you did it, cause I wanted to tell him, well, you got two kids. I got six, get two more. And then we can have a conversation, but you can't tell me you were two. And I got six. It ain't even nowhere near close. And then the Lord just said, mm, and then he just stopped, but he started assuming. He wanted to he wanted to he wanted to give me a life that he didn't even know was mine. He just started to sue me. Didn't ask about the character, didn't ask who we were, didn't ask anything. And I just and for a minute I just pulled back cuz I wanted to share with him. I wanted to transform. I wanted to help him transform his life. I wanted at that moment to just have a conversation with him to put him in a thought process for himself. Okay, so here you are assuming that we are, but you you working at Home Depot helping us. I wanted to just go there and it was like, nope, you don't need to. You don't need to. You don't need to. Because he wanted to help us, but he was helping us in a demeaning way. I wanted to help him in an empowering way because I want to lead people with some power. I, wanted, I, want, I want you to walk away thinking, gosh, how can I make my character better? And he kind of assumed, he kind of just assumed I was a single mom with my kids. We here at Home Depot and he was going to give my, you know, my son with no dad some advice. He just assumed. 
And I wanted so bad to just impart to him. And, and the Lord just had him be quiet. And he just kind of shut, he cut the conversation off. And I just backed up. But I want to leave you with something. Because that's how I live my life. Every day, I, every day if, if I don't have a conversation with somebody, I want to I want to seek out something to make me better. If it's on TV, if it's in a book, if it's something that I read, if it's in scripture, if it's if it's I want to find something today that I didn't have yesterday. And I do that every single day. If it's just picking up a book and reading a, a, a page from a book, not a chapter but something to build my character every single day, working on me from the inside out. That's how character is built. Because the inside, listen, the reason that you focus on the inside to be better, come on here, to the outside is because the inside is going to influence the outside. So people can tell you what they are. But watch people. Don't listen to people. Watch people. Because whatever their inside is, is going to come out. The inside always influences the outside more than the outside influencing the inside. Think about that. Whatever you really are on the inside, that's what comes out. And you and people say, you know, we church people say, the Lord know my heart. He does. I'm just, it's the tree that, you know, knowing a tree by the fruit that it bears. I'm, 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 I hear you, but I'm looking at the fruit. You're telling me you're an apple tree, but you're producing oranges. The inside always influences the outside. And you guys know my saying, stop talking about it and start walking about it. Stop talking about it and start walking about it. Stop saying it and start doing it. Put up or shut up. Basically, stop talking about it. Because when I got to take the time to focus on me to make this inside better, come on here. And I got to change some things in me. I got to change the way that I think about myself. I got to change the way that I think about life. I need to change the way I think about my com community. I need to change the way I think about God. I need to change my thought process about my money. I need to change the thought process about my, you know, exercising and taking care of myself and getting enough sleep and drinking enough water. Oh, I hate water. You know, we say that. You need to change your thought process because the inside, come on here, influences the outside. And the outside says, I don't work out. The outside says, I don't eat right. The outside says, I'm not good with my money. The outside says, I'm not good in relationships. The outside says, and it only says that because it's what the inside is saying first. No matter what the mouth is saying. The, the, the Bible says the tongue is unruly. It just goes. Sometimes the mind can't even control the tongue. It just, oop, did I say that? The tongue just speaks, the Bible says. But if I change what's in here, I'll get disciplined. If I change it and unpack the stuff that God gave me, discipline comes to my life. Commitment comes to my life. Integrity comes to my life. Power comes to my life. I can focus. My creativity gets bigger. My talent shows up. My gifts come forth. If I can discipline me on the inside, come on here and slow down my life on the outside and focus my life on the outside and organize my life on the inside. If I can change on the inside, all of this stuff on the outside, it'll, it'll change. And here I am trying to make changes on the outside before I make changes on the inside. And it's not going to happen. And when you, when you really start to work on you and focus on being a better you to be a better, to be better for them. Listen, you can't focus on them. I told you in the beginning, you can't focus on them to make you a better you. You got to focus on being a better you and then focus on making them better. If you're going to lead anybody, lead, lead you first. If you're going to lead anybody, lead you first. Focus on your character first. Focus on your money first. Focus on your relationships first. Focus on your house first. Focus on your children first. Before you go save everybody else's marriage and have the marriage conference, focus on your marriage first. Focus on your life 
first. Don't go cleaning their house and you need to go home and clean your house. No, 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 no. Don't go help them with that. And you need to help you with this. Focus on you first. Inside out. The inside influences your outside. And when you start making you a habit, come on here, to build your character, listen, you start getting, he says, you get those inside victories. And the inside victories are bigger than the outside victories. Listen, we put a lot of emphasis on the outside victories because we need people to see us. We need people to see what we've accomplished. We need to see, we need people to see what we can do. We need people to see how sharp we are. We need people to see how educated we are, how important we are. That's why we, you know, we hang our stuff and show people and, you know, make sure we get a picture, put it on Instagram because we need people to see our victories. Look at girl, look what I'm doing in life right now. And the outside victories, listen, the outside victories aren't the celebrations. That's not where you do the end zone dance. You do the end zone dance. Come on here for the inside victories. Man, I could have said something back. I could have gone there. I always talk about the girl in the trunk. She's in the trunk. I keep her in the trunk. I got a bigger lock. But some kind of way, sometimes she, she picked that lock and she, she shows up. I keep a girl in the trunk. But when, 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 I, when I got her on lockdown, that's an inside victory. When I don't say what I really want to say because I'm so angry and I'm so hurt. You ever get so hurt and so angry that you just cry? You, you know, I'm not, I'm not crying because I'm sad. I'm crying because I can't say what I want to say. I'm crying because I can't do what I want to do. I'm crying because, you know, back in the day, you could make a phone call. I'm crying because I can't go where I want to go. I'm crying because I can't respond the way I want to respond. The tears are not tears of, woe is me, they just hurt my mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. It's because the girl in the trunk is rattling the cage. And then God says, be quiet, be still, watch me show you this. Sit back and shut your mouth, Natalie, because if you let her out the cage and let her out of the trunk, you are gonna blow it. And so sometimes God says, sit back, just sit back. He says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Sit back and let me fight your battles, be quiet. So then I want to go all the way back. And then you know what? I'm just not going. And he says, mm -mm, I need you to stay your position. I need you to still do what you do. I need you to still come forth. I need you to still stand up. I need you to still be at the right hand of your husband. I need you to still lead. I need you to continue to teach. I need you to continue to pour into people. I need you to continue to give. I need you to continue to stand. And I will take care of the rest. But if you open your mouth, you're going to blow it. And when I do exactly what he tells me to do, that's an inside victory. And I'm doing my end zone dance because I did it. I made it. I obeyed and I finally got it right. I listened and he brings it. And he says, I told you, I'm building character in you. Everybody don't want character. I was listening to Bishop Jakes and he said, everybody come, people come to church for different reasons. Some people come to church because it's, they, they were, they've been conditioned since children that to go to church on Sunday. So they go to church. Some people come to church because they want to hear the music. And then about 10% show up because they want their lives changed and they want to meet God's presence. Everybody ain't there because they serious. Everybody not there because they're trying to walk with me because they're trying to build character and because they're trying to walk in holiness and because they're trying to walk in, in, in integrity. Because if people were, to, if, if you were, it would be evident in their lives. We have, we got healing lines because people don't do the word. They come to church for church. They don't come to church for God. Because if you walk with him, he will do your life. He'll teach you. He'll build character in you. He'll show you. And you'll have all those inside victories to celebrate when you get in the habit of listening to him. Some of us don't have inside victories and we, we relish the outside victories because we haven't made it a habit of listening, of obeying God. So we're always in the struggle rather than being in the press. 
Some of us are always struggling rather than being in the press. Paul said, I'm forgetting what's behind me. Let me tell you this. What's behind me is struggle. What's behind me is defeat. What's behind me is disappointment. What's behind me is mess. What's behind me is stuff. But he says, I'm forgetting those things that are behind me and I press forward toward the mark. He says, I'm in the press. I'm not in the struggle. And some of us are still struggling, struggling in our marriages. Why can't two adults get along that, that love each other? Two adults that love you. One, at one point in time, you love each other so much, you said we need to do a ceremony and spend the rest of our lives together. And now we can't get it right to save our lives. Why? Because you living in the struggle rather than living in the press. I press towards the mark. For the prize of the upward call of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And nobody can take me out of the press. My husband can't take me out of the press. Because God says, I'm building something in you. I'm going to give you more victories. The more you obey me, the more that you make this a habit, the more that you deny yourself, the more that you build a standard, that you live according to a standard, the greater, the more that you know who you are in me. Come on here. The greater your standard, the greater your value, the greater your worth. When you start to know who you really are in God, when you get in the press and get out of the struggle, he says, then you'll see me in your life. Stop asking me for stuff. He says, and you'll have many more inside victories to celebrate because you, you'll see yourself growing by leaps and bounds. Stop complaining about the situation you're in. Change it. Stop waiting for God to change the situation. Get up and change it. You remember when we had TVs with no, re now we got remotes and we, 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 we got remotes for the ceiling fan. We got a remote for the TV. We got a remote. Listen, I start my car from my cell phone. You can start your car from your phone. You can start the oven from your phone. You can start the TV, the computer. You can start everything from a remote. And now we're pointing it to heaven. Lord, oh, I need batteries. God ain't listening. I need batteries in my remote because it's not reaching heaven today. We expect God to be the same way. We're doing the same thing with him. And he says, mm -mm, if you want your life different, you, I gave you everything you need. And if you listen to me, he says, I'm building some character in you. Come on here. I'm building, I'm building some things in you. You have everything you need. I have some things in you that you haven't even unfolded yet. I have some places in you that I want to take you and you got to get, you got to be ready to go there. I have some things in you that will blow your mind that you haven't even tapped into yet. And he says, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. He says, if you want to really develop the outside of you, start from inside. Because everything that you think you're changing on the outside is doing no good for the inside. He says, but if you really want to build character, you want to change, you want a whole new look, a whole new feel, a whole new, you want people to respond to you different. He says the outside development will come from the inside. You have total control to change the outside. But if you want to do some lasting changes, some life altering changes, change the inside first. Come on here. Be the leader in your life. Stand up. Be responsible. Have integrity. Be honest with yourself. Stop lying to yourself. I tell you all the time, you know your emotions lie to you. People tell me, women say all the time, men say it too. I feel, I feel like, I just feel, well, that's a feeling. That's a lie. Your feelings will lie to you. Your feelings will have you look at the situation and see the situation and never see God. And here God is big as the, the sky and the situation is this big, you know, small as an ant. And your feelings will have you looking at this, making the situation huge and God small. It's perception. You see it the way you want to see it. Your perception says you ever driving down the street and when you're driving down the street and you look afar off and you look at all the, look at all the telephone poles. It looks like from where you are sitting, from where you're sitting in your car, you can pull all those light poles out of the ground, like toothpicks, like just from, from afar off, they look smaller. And it looks like you you're greater than they are because you're so far away from them. 
but drive up on one of those telephone poles and try to pull it up with your bare hand. The closer you get to it, the bigger it gets. Listen to me. The closer you get to it, the bigger it gets. It's like an airplane. When you look up at the airplane from the sky, it looks like you can actually reach up and pull that airplane down. But when you're in that airplane in the sky, it's huge. Because the closer you get to it, the bigger it is. And so the closer you get to your problem, the bigger it is. But on the other side of that thing, listen to me, the closer you get to God, the bigger he is. And only one thing can be that big in your life at a time. Come on here, somebody. So either I'm going to get close to God and he's going to be that big in my life. Or I'm going to be that close to my problem and it's going to be that big in my life. But the problem can't be big in your life and God big in your life at the same time. Both of them can't be big. One has to be smaller than the other at, at every point in your life. At every time in your life, one has to be larger than the other one. But both of them can't be the same size at the same time. So either I'm going to magnify my circumstances situation. Come on here and be the victim to it and not listen to God and not allow him to build character and not allow him to make me the leader in my life and keep complaining and whining and talking about how bad my life is. Or I'm going to make God big in my life. And I'm going to talk about what he's made me to be, how powerful I am. Come on here. I don't care what has happened to you in your life. God knew when it happened. He knew it was going to happen. He knew how it was going to happen. And he even knows why it's going to happen. And let me tell you this. We say, God, why me? God, why would this happen to me? Why would this? Why? God says, if you can't handle, if what happened to you is overwhelming you, you really can't handle why I did it. You don't need, he said, be like Solomon and be wise. Don't ask the wrong questions. If what is happening to you is about to take you out, why would you ask God, why is it happening to you? We can't even handle the what. So I don't want to know why. Listen, what, what, what has almost just taken me out? I don't know. I don't, I can't comprehend why he did it. I don't want to know why he did it. You understand what I'm saying? We know God sent his son. We know what God did. He gave his son and his son gave his life. Understand me, but we will never be able to comprehend why he sent his son to die for us. And we didn't ask him for it. We didn't even know we needed it. If I can't comprehend what he did, you put your son on a cross to take nails for me. And I didn't ask for that. I didn't know I needed that. I surely can't comprehend why he did it. God, I don't know why you love me so much. When I think about how I blow it every day, on my best days, the scripture says on our, uh, our best is as filthy rags. If I can't handle what, what he did, sending Jesus, I can't comprehend why he loves me that much. The why has to be because he's God. And that's just something we'll never understand. I can't handle the what. The what is the what is about to wipe me out. God, I'm not ready for the why. I don't want to know why. I don't know what I don't want to know why. If you can sustain me through the what, if you can keep me through the what, if you can hold me up through the what, if you can give me strength through the what, if you can conquer com comfort me through the what, I don't I don't want to know why. I can't even handle the what, God. What he's trying to do is build character in me. And this is, this is enough for me. God, this is, this is more than enough. Just learning to, learn to control my emotions, learning to control my temper, learning to shut my mouth, learning to be in order, learning to stand anyway, having done all to stand, stand. I, I, I'm having a problem with the what in him building my character. I don't know why he wants to use me, but I'll go. I'll do it. Whatever you need to do to build me, to make me, build me, to make me, God. Whatever you need to do to build me, to make me, build me, to make me, I'm willing. But I, I don't want to know why. I, I can't handle it. I'm, I get a headache. I, my head start hurting thinking about it. My head hurt thinking about the what. 
He says, let me build character in you. Let me make you the leader in your own life. Stop saving the world and save yourself first. You know what they say on the airplane? In the event that this cabin should lose pressure, the mask will come down, place your mask on your face first, and then proceed to cover it. You done ran through the whole airplane putting everybody's mask on in the name of Jesus. You done put everybody's mask on in the name of Jesus. Then when you get to your seat, the airplane out of oxygen. But you saved everybody in Jesus' name, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Everybody on the plane lived but you. And the speech at the beginning before the plane ever took off was, should the cabin lose pressure, please, the mask will come down, put yours on first. You didn't hear the instructions. And, and some of y'all not reading the instructions. You're running around saving the world. <laughs> Listen to me. Jesus said, I, I came to do the work of him that sent me. I am my father. And when he knew who he was when he got here. So when what happened to him happened, he didn't detour from it because he was sure of who he was when he got there. And some of us are walking around trying to save the world and our family and our kids and helping everybody. And you're not even sure of who you are. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not telling you not to help people and save people, take care of your kids. I'm not telling you that. Don't misunderstand me. But I am telling you, put your mask on first. Save you. Be sure of who you are before you go trying to be superwoman or superman to everybody else. That's all. That's all. Be the leader in your own life first. Be the leader in your own life first. Be the leader in your own life first. Simple little saying, sweep around your front door before you start sweeping around everybody else's. Clean up, clean up your heart, clean up your mind, clean up your spiritual walk before you start trying to clean up everybody else's. Be the leader in your life first. Let go of that lackadaisical mentality that my life, the Lord gonna make a way somehow. Okay. Just don't call me when he don't make it and you need something. Because this is the answer. That Just giving you something not going to be the answer with me. This is the answer. Let him build some things in you so that you don't have to keep going over the same stuff. Step to the forefront of your life. Become the leader in your own life. Take charge of your own life. Put your mask on first. So much more in you that you're denying yourself because you're telling yourself you're not ready. And you are ready. If you let him build your character, remember, he says, I want you to focus on being better from the inside out because the inside influences the outside. And the inside victories are bigger than the outside victories. And the outside development is totally within your control if you work from the inside out. Focus on being better from the inside out. Listen to me. The inside influences the outside. Keep that in mind. Your inside victories are greater than your outside victories. And you can develop the outside if you develop the inside first. Keep that in mind. Step to the forefront of your life. Lead your own life. I love you guys. Thank you guys for listening. Listen, January 25th, the dynamics have changed. The men are asking me if they can be a part of this event. And I'm saying yes. So I'm trying to get my husband on board. I would love to have my husband on board so we can give you a one-two punch. Uh, both of us will be there. Um, also mentorship. Mentorship is open for women and men. Husbands, wives, please join us for mentorship. Please join us on the 25th of January. Go to my website, nataliekowens.com to purchase your ticket. I would love to see you there. Mentorship starts January. All of the information is on my website, nataliekowens.com. Thank you guys for watching tonight. I love you. I'll see you next Tuesday. And we're going to continue with the leader in my life. God bless you guys and have a good night. Bye-bye.